Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is FF Cheat Code. I'm here to share with you my 2020 season predictions, or 2020-2021 season predictions. Um, I hope you like what I have for you today. Um, this is going to be just a part one of most likely a four-parter, a but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and get with it, uh, move through as many as we can, um, follow me, like, share, subscribe, check me out on Twitter, please, I'm trying to build a following there too, at uh, FF Cheat Code Express, thank you. Well, first up we have the Bears, the Chicago Bears of the NFC North, coming in at a paltry 6-10, and 10. and I hope I'm not doing them any favors there. Uh, I hope that's pretty accurate. I'm just kidding. I think the Bears, they'll be alright, but they'll have a higher pick in the draft next year. They brought in Nick Foles to uh, compete with Mitchell Trubisky this year. It looks like he couldn't even beat out Mitch. Um, so I don't know how that's going to go if they'll be flip-flopping back and forth. But if he couldn't beat out Mitch with like 100% ease, then, you know, is he even any better? Um, I hope for fantasy football purposes that doesn't really affect uh, Allen Robinson. Um, he almost had 100 receptions last year. I think he was like a the wide, receiver, wide receiver seven overall. Um, pretty excited about him. Um, I was really on top of David Montgomery, but I've been picking up Terry Cohen everywhere. Just a, just a season ago, in 2018, he finished as an RB1, I think. Or he might have been a high-end RB2. It was 12 or 13. Um, so, his inefficiencies, hopefully they will regress towards the mean um, in a positive way. Um, and he'll have a much better season. Aaron Rodgers, you know, still there and still, you know, an awesome player. Maybe the uh, most talented thrower of the football I've ever seen. Um, and they got, grabbed A.J. Dillon in the second round, I believe, um, when they have already got in Aaron Jones. And, you know, Jamal Williams, for his role, did excellent, you know. He had usable fantasy games last year. But um, anyways, getting down to business, um, they went 13-3. and They lost in the NFC Championship game. There was a lot of blibbity blah 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 about their um, losing one-score games or, you know, close games and whatnot. They very well could have been, you know, 7-9 and nine or... You know, something like that. Um, I'm not buying into all that crap. It's the NFL. Um, all There's tons of teams that have that uh, situation among them. But still, in the end, I got them down for 10 and 6. Um, I'm not really making playoff predictions in this, but 
I could definitely see them uh, sneaking in, especially with a 10 and 6 record. An awesome draft, in my opinion, with the uh, unreliability of uh, Carry On Johnson. The drafting of DeAndre Swift was, you know, pretty pretty good to me. Um, he was a lot of people's number one running back, even over you know Jonathan Taylor and the, uh, of course, J.K. Dobbins, who didn't participate. But they did lose Darius Slay. But Slay was unhappy, and maybe if that could have been affecting this play, so they turned around and third overall drafted Ohio State's Jeff Okuda. Really, really excited about that. You know, there was a lot of speculation if they got, you know, um, traded up or whatnot, um, maybe losing Stafford and grabbing a QB, blah, blah, blah. You know, they got a defensive dynamite shut down corner in my opinion all right let's move on had a pretty interesting offseason to say the least um, fairly uh, fairly decent draft I guess on the top end they um, they lost Stefan Diggs um, or they traded him to the Buffalo Bills who we'll speak about a little later um, they still have Adam Thielen and they have their newly acquired uh, Justin Jefferson, last year's uh, Irv Smith, and um, Ola B.C. Johnson. I got them coming in, um, most likely winning their division, too, at 11-5. and five. So, we'll see. So, just to um, recap all of that, we have the... Vikings at 11 and 5, the Packers at 10 and 6, the Lions at 9 and 7, and the Bears at 6 and 10. edition Todd Gurley led Falcons that's oh I knew I was forgetting somebody we forgot old Hayden Hurst uh, second round draft pick trade for um, a first round draft choice of the Baltimore Ravens um, as usual I expect this team to be high flying like a Falcon would be um, Still don't know about their defense. Um, of course, uh, Todd Gurley's questionable. You know, um, I believe in him, honestly. I think he's fine. Um, Ryan Hill seems to be the handcuff. Uh, everyone and their mother has Calvin Ridley pegged as the Chris Godwin breakout. Um, just to keep this moving, I got them pegged at... Let's see, we have them pegged at 9 and 7, so that may not be enough to keep their head coach, uh, Dan Mullen, um, but we'll see. Oh, and uh, another minor note that I heard a little bit about is um, the uh, offensive coordinator 
oh, I forgot his name, that used to be a head coach of the uh, Buccaneers and whatnot. He's never had a top rushing offense. So that's something to note on Todd Gurley, but it also is a positive thing for the uh, passing offense. So, you know, for the Julios, Calvin, and Hurst, and even maybe reception, you know, uh, target market share for uh, Todd Gurley. You know, maybe it'll help out there. But uh, I see them finishing 9-7 and seven this year. It's the New Orleans Saints. It's a solid team all around. They've got, you know, Drew probably in his final year, so really wanting to, you know, get another ring. So you know they're going to be playing hard. Um, they've got Alvin. Um, they're closing in on an extension for him as far as I can see. Uh, of course, Michael Thomas led the NFL in pretty much any receiving stat you can think of. Um, Jared Cook. Uh, was a tight uh, was a top tight end prospect for most of the latter games last year. Uh, defense, you know, it usually takes them a minute to get going, but they turn out to be a tight defense. Um, I did see a little bit about Sheldon Rankins maybe trading. I don't know. Um, that'd be a really really bad loss for them. Um, but yeah, if you have kickers and defenses, you know, Lutz single, you know, all year I had him last year, loved him. But I have them going, um, tying uh, for the division lead with the. Well, I'm not gonna say who. Save that for next. Um, but 11 and five. we have the Carolina Panthers the Cam Newton less Lou Keekley Carolina Carolina Panthers um, I don't know what to say about them they are the uh, sole owner of the recently paid number one fantasy running back Christian McCaffrey will run CMC I expect him to finish on up there this year um, expect DJ Moore to do well. I'm really high on Ian Thomas. Um, now their outlook because of their defense and um, lack of leadership and whatnot. Um, I just don't know how good they are going to be. But with their new coach and whatnot, I still have this high, flying, high, you know, highly powerful uh, offense that they have. Their new quarterback. I still got them going seven and nine, man. Uh, I think they can get seven wins. I, I kind of hate it for them because that's gonna, you know, put their draft pick, you know, maybe up there 11, 12, 13, um, instead of getting one of those top picks. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Last but certainly not least, the newly revived Tom Brady-led Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This team's interesting. Um, they just signed Leonard Fournette. They, I mean, it's a first, first pick, you know, first round pick, draft pick. Um, they got a heck of a. Uh, tackle in the draft they've got Ronald Jones they've got Mike Evans last year's breakout um, Darling Chris Godwin uh, God Lord the tight end group with you know hello in Cameron Great um, one of my personal favorites OJ Howard who broke my heart 
killed me last year. Um, but then Tom Brady had his buddy and best friend, Target Monster, Rob Gronkowski, uh, back in the house uh, with the, uh, you know, this team's going to be good, I believe. Um, Tom Brady is a smart player, man. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a... If it's going to be a high-powered passing offense or rushing now, though, um, they've got weapons everywhere. They already had the number one rush defense last year. Um, they got better in the passing um, as the season went on last year. Um, they're playing for a lot this year. You know, Tom Brady doesn't have much, but... Just to take a ride down Narrative Street, the gosh dang Super Bowl is taking place in Tampa Bay, Florida. Like they could they could have a home Super Bowl. If they if they got home field advantage over the Saints, I mean they could play a whole bunch of home games and I mean I'd be surprised to not see them winning in that. And, you know, if they were in that kind of situation. But, uh, we'll see. I got them tied with the Saints uh, with an 11-5 record, though. Well, guys, that's going to sum it up for today. This video started to get a little bit longer. Um, letting me know I'm probably going to have to break this down into a... Uh, three or four parter um we'll definitely conclude the nfc um in the next video um maybe start some of the afc um i hope if you like what what i've uh, predicted here um we'll go back and review all of it First off, we had the uh, Bears at 6 and 10, the Lions at 9 and 7, the Packers at 10 and 6, the Vikings at 11 and 5. We also had the um, Falcons at 9 and 7, the Panthers at 7 and 9, the Saints at 11 and 5, and the Bucks at 11 and 5. Let me know your predictions down in the comments. Um, like and subscribe. I'm kind of new to this, obviously. Just trying to have fun, really. Um, I'm doing a lot of this just uh, for my leagues, but I'd like to see where it goes. Um, I hope the YouTube market isn't oversaturated. I hope there's enough of you guys for me, too. I'm not necessarily after money or anything. Just think it be self-fulfilling to have something you know that people want to listen to and value i have much much better um in-depth fantasy analysis on on the way but because of the season getting close and i mean we're right up on it i wanted to go ahead and put this out there um stay tuned uh for parts two through probably four uh, tomorrow. I'll have them up. Thank you guys. Uh, remember Fantasy Express on Twitter, on Twitter, um, Instagram, all that. You can find me. Please check me out. Please share the video. Like it. Subscribe it. Thank you.